Let's do a little uh, YouTube algorithm test today. Let's test if likes actually help a video get more views. So before you do anything, hit the like button and uh, let's test it out. I appreciate you joining me on this experiment. Kai, do you wanna say anything to everybody? Kai, can you tell everybody to hit that like button? Hit that like button. Perfect. I was gonna do the, the review of the Mavic Air 2, no. but today's supposed to be a rainy day, so I think we're gonna have to save that for Monday. It would have been perfect though, because this guy's going to his grandparents. Are you excited? Oh, oh. did you bonk your head? Oh, yeah. oh sorry, buddy. See you later. Bye -bye. Don't miss me too much. Don't miss me. Uh, 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 yeah, dude. <laughs> Miss <Hey>. you guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Great call with the boys. I miss those guys. Uh, we have some some secret stuff in the works, uh, which may or may not be of interest to you. We shall see. Secret stuff. Secret stuff. Today, we're gonna find out whether or not the Tesla hype is real or fake. I'm not really that much of a car guy if I'm like 100% honest with you guys, but if there's one car company that has always interested me from the very first time I saw one, it's Tesla. It just seems so futuristic and like straight out of a movie or something. I literally thought it was a concept car when I first saw it. And recently Tesla has just been like skyrocketing, no pun intended, in their stock, in public perception, it's just the quality of their cars. And honestly, I never thought I would get to drive one, let alone own one. And then five months ago, I bought my very own Tesla Model 3 performance. But the real question is, after years of dreaming about a car like this and now finally owning it and driving it every single day, is the Tesla worth the hype? Is the hype real or is it just a bunch of fanboys part of the Tesla cult? Is it fake? First, let's talk about how is it to drive. Oh my gosh, it is insanely fun to drive. Like I can't overstate that more. It's so fast, but more than that, it's the instant power you get from hitting that accelerator right away. It happens right away, you get that power and I've never ever felt that before. And then you stick it in track mode and it's just like, what is this little sedan car? I may or may not have done a whole bunch of donuts during the winter. That, that's probably the most fun I've ever had driving a car. And then just for your daily driving, having that one pedal driving where you literally almost never use the brakes, I don't know. There's just something really, really satisfying about that. I hate using the brakes metal on metal, just grinding away for no reason at all. This way you're just regenerating electricity back to your batteries. It's very satisfying. So much nicer to drive with just one pedal. If you didn't know, as soon as you let go of the accelerator, it starts to slow down. It's almost like you're braking, like a, like a reasonable, like how I would normally brake, and it's done really well actually. So you don't need to use the brakes unless you need to brake like really hard and fast. I would say probably, 99% at least of the time, I, I'm only using the one pedal. In terms of driving experience, the hype is definitely real. The range is one of the best in electric vehicles, but for winter driving here in Canada, I got in the winter right away, I was hit with the reality that eh, when it's cold outside, when it's real cold outside, the battery's gonna die a lot faster, so you're not gonna get as much range as you think you are. The new Model Y has like a built-in heater for the battery, so I assume it'll work better in cold temperatures. I would say the range is still really great, but I was definitely having anxiety in the beginning uh, just watching the percentages drop so quickly and just like having this like almost like a little panic attack that I'm gonna run out of battery and I'm gonna be stuck in the middle of nowhere with 
just like no way to get anywhere with my car because I can't just run to the gas station to get some more electricity. So in terms of range, I think it's like a, a mixed type. It's not bad. It's I haven't had any issues, but it's also a little bit worse than I expected, especially with the winter. In terms of autopilot, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me. It's really handy at times, but then there's other times where you just realize like, the technology just isn't quite there yet. For example, using the Navigate on autopilot where it actually does all the lane changes for you and all that, it's able to do them and it does them in a fairly safe way, but it, it doesn't know like the, the driving etiquette. And there's a lot of times where it just kind of cuts somebody off a little bit that they have to slow down or things like that. And, and that stresses me out to the point that I don't usually ever use Navigate on autopilot. But in terms of just staying in the lane and doing all the driving for you in that lane and then you choosing when you wanna do lane changes, it does it pretty flawlessly. For example here, it's doing all the driving for me. I don't, I should keep my hands on the steering wheel, but I don't need to actually. It's able to drive completely 100% for me. Like there's, I think there's only been like a few times where it just like, it got a little bit confused by something and, and that's obviously that's why you have your hands on the steering wheel. It does a really, really impressive job. The autopilot is a great feature. I love using it. Whenever I'm on the, the freeways, the bigger highways, um, I'm usually using the autopilot, but don't expect the car to be able to drive itself, not yet, at least in the way that they've enabled it for us drivers right now. Uh, so in terms of autopilot, I'd say the hype is, a mixed bag it's it's real and there's some maybe hyperbole the autopilot is still kind of being rolled out but honestly there's so many times where i'm i'm in autopilot or whatever you want to call it and then i'm just like man no this car is so fun to drive i just want to drive it and i just turn it off and i start driving for myself i did get a big chip on the front hood apparently the paint isn't quite as as uh strong as on a lot of other cars because of california environmental laws or something like that so that's unfortunate, but it's just a car. In terms of maintenance, since there's no like typical normal engine, there's just a, there's a frunk with my Gorilla Pod in there. I've been driving this Tesla for five months, almost every day. And the only thing I've done so far is change the winter tires with these super speed rims, which are really great. And car washes, this one has cool lights to make it look that is literally it. I haven't even added windshield washer fluid yet, but that would be the only other thing that I would need to do. That's pretty dang amazing. I would say the hype is 100% real there. The extra bells and whistles like a whoopee cushion or having Netflix or YouTube or Twitch on your car screen, or the fact that it can summon itself from a parking spot all the way to you. All those like little bells and whistles, they are overhyped, but they're fun to have. I, like I don't use them every day, but every once in a while I do, I'm like, oh, that's so cool that I have those. And they keep adding all these cool things. So I would say that is overhyped. It's kind of fake hype, but it is fun at the same time. Now, the one thing that did scare me about electric cars at first is the charging. Superchargers are really great though, except for this one has a uh, bird poop on it. And so the rain begins. Okay, back to the car. Superchargers are super fast. They're really great, but they aren't everywhere. So that's a downer, but you can charge at home if you live in a house, but I live in a condo, but we do have two communal charging spots. So that that's the only downside is sometimes uh, they're taken or I have to go and leave the cars charging there and I have to go back and grab it and park it again but it is free, so I can't really complain. Literally to this day, the only things that I've paid for, obviously I paid for the car, but the only other things that I've paid for is insurance and the, and the winter tires. But I haven't paid anything for charging so far. I've only used free supercharging and then free charging at my building. So for me, at first being kind of scared and not knowing how all the charging would work, it was definitely overhyped. I didn't like it at all. But now that I'm used to it, 
the hype is real. It's super easy. The only real downside is going to somewhere like my cottage, for example, where there isn't a supercharger along the way or near the destination. So it's kind of scary to take the Tesla there and not knowing am I going to make it there and back on one charge. Speaking of charging, if you're buying a Tesla, you should use my referral code because you'll get, I think, 1500 free supercharger miles. So uh, yeah, use my code. Not only is the Tesla better for the environment, but it's also just so fun and really great to drive. And I think that's what you have to do. People are, are stupid and selfish and they're not going to really change their ways. Like if we want to save the environment, we can't just keep telling people, hey, we should save the environment. That's just not going to work. People have to be given a better option that's also better for the environment. And that to me is a Tesla. It's 1000% purely a selfish reason to drive an electric car and it also is better for the environment. And before you get you typing away that comment saying electricity also pollutes, yes, electricity done wrong can also pollute a lot, but it has the option of being really clean and sustainable, whereas oil and gas just doesn't. And I also get that they're really, really expensive. They're starting to get cheaper, but Teslas are not a cheap car, but they are forcing all of the other car companies to also make electric cars, which hopefully will gradually bring down the cost of electric cars so more people have access to them. You know that feeling when you first get your driver's license, like your very first day, you will take any excuse to go out and drive. It's like, mom, do you need some milk? I can get it. Dad, do you need ink for your printer? I'll grab it. I still get that same feeling every single day with my Tesla. Well, maybe not quite as much, but you get the point. So overall, there is some fake hype or over hype like with any great product, but I think a lot of the hype is 100% legit. And uh, it actually surprised me because I'm a pretty skeptical, like very realistic. And I fully expected to get used to the Tesla really quickly and kind of get bored and just like, oh yeah, it's, it's just a car. But every single day I drive it, I'm like, man, this thing is just insane. So is the Tesla hype real or fake? Mm, I would say there's definitely some over hype, some fake hype, but the majority of it I would say is 100% real. A cop just pulled up. I hope I didn't do anything wrong. I don't think I did. I've, fun fact, I've never ever been pulled over by a cop. I've been driving for like what? How old am I? 33? I've been driving for 17 years and I've never ever been pulled over by a cop. I have gotten one ticket though. That's kind of a riddle. How do you think I got a speeding ticket without getting pulled over? All right, I gotta tell you guys. So I was driving in Finland. In Finland, they have these like cameras on the side of the road that if you're speeding by, it'll take a picture and it'll send you a ticket. It wasn't one of those. I was driving down the highway in, uh, in Helsinki and there was this black van parked on the side of the road. I'm driving normally and I was probably driving like 110 and 100. And all of a sudden this big flash just hits me. I'm like, Whoa, what was that? And there's literally, I kid you not, there is a camera in the back of that black van that's parked on the side of the highway and it has one of those radar camera speed trap things in it. So uh, I got a speeding ticket without ever getting pulled over. Now you know. I need ice cream cone. Kai's back. I need the ice cream cone. How is it? It's pretty frozen. It's pretty frozen. <laughs> what else should they do? Like, Hi. Say, hit that notification button. Give <laughs> me toys. Add toys? I'm curious how many of you guys actually ended up liking it from my, my intro experiment. And I am genuinely curious, how much does it affect the video? If it gets a lot of likes, does it get more views? Because mm, to me, I don't know.